Claire Lyon is a midwife at Liverpool Women's Hospital. She's now working in a clinical research role. Claire has previously worked on a project exploring the lifestyle attitudes and behaviors of pregnant and postnatal women. She completed a master's of research at the University of Portsmouth in 2016, looking at health outcomes for the arrival of a midwife. She currently works on an RCT of an intervention to prevent post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms in women following a traumatic birth experience. Her professional interests include women's birth experiences and perinatal mental health. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Claire now. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Claire. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, a big hello and thank you to everybody else who's joined the presentation today. And um, just a big warm thank you for joining us to celebrate this fantastic day of celebration um, for midwives around the world. I think it's truly fantastic. And, um, without further ado, I've had a fantastic introduction there from Cecilia. So thank you for that. And I will just crack on now with the presentation. Um, should take around 25 minutes, maybe, and then there'll be plenty of opportunity for discussion and questions at the end. Okay. So today's presentation relates to a project that I was involved with about 18 months ago now. And the project was a European funded project looking at the lifestyle, behaviours and attitudes of pregnant women and new mums, so up to 12 months postnatal. Um, and the postnatal Pilates project was delivered as part of a campaign of activities to help improve the lifestyle of pregnant and postnatal women. Other activities that we also develop, developed and we delivered delivered included free swimming sessions and a walking group, but by far the most popular um, activity were the postnatal Pilates sessions. And in fact, they were so popular that the instructor that we worked with um, has now gone on to continue the course um, in a slightly different part of the city. Um, but yeah, it just shows that um, these things can take off and uh, there's some really positive consequences as a result of the project. So, in the presentation, I want to cover some literature around Pilates in pregnancy and the postnatal period. It's not designed to be an exhaustive review of the literature, but just some highlights to get you started and steer you towards further re reading should you wish to delve into this area much more in the future. I'll talk about the details of the programme, <clears throat> so how we designed it and how we delivered it, before presenting the feedback from the study. I'll then talk, talk in slightly more general terms about things that um, <clears throat> you may wish to consider if you choose to run a course of this type. Um, or any other course aimed at postnatal women, for that matter. I then want to give a brief overview of current guidelines that we have here in the UK about exercising in pregnancy and beyond. Um, and that will lead us on to time for discussion and question. And it will be great if we can hear about your experiences or your thoughts on Pilates, either in pregnancy or postnatally or any other exercise or lifestyle advice that you routinely give. As Cecilia said, we'll try and keep the discussion towards the end, but please do raise your hand if you've got something that you want to say um, so you don't forget when it comes to the end. All right. So before we continue looking at Pilates, I thought it was best to 
just describe what Pilates is and try and explain it for those who perhaps are unfamiliar with it. So Pilates is a low to no impact um, mind body exercise system. It encourages participants to focus on their breathing, concentration and their core strength, making it nearly an ideal exercise choice for pregnant and postnatal women. In women's health, it encourages the pelvic floor muscles to work with the deep tummy muscles to build up stability and strength in a trunk. And we know that a well-supported trunk will help to protect the back and it may help to lessen any lower back pain women are experiencing. So you can see why we chose Pilates as a fantastic activity for women in the postnatal period. <clears throat> so as I said, I'll just start by introducing you to some of the literature that's been um, and some of the research that's been done in this area. But there is only a small amount of literature um, <clears throat> about the effect effects of Pilates on postnatal recovery and in particular there's a shortage of good quality randomised control trials. <clears throat> there's a number of articles that explain about postnatal exercises and how Pilates can help with recovery in the postnatal period and pelvic floor exercises. But the studies that I pulled out um, to just run through with you today and focus on a whole range of postnatal related symptoms so they look at how Pilates can impact on postnatal depression, on pelvic floor tone, on core muscle strength and on sleep quality. Okay so <clears throat> there's about five studies that I were able to pull out for you coming from all over the world which is really appropriate considering today's International Day of the Midwife and as I said they looked at various different things. So we've got studies coming from India, looking at core muscle strength. So <clears throat> in that study, they were looking at the effects of a mat-based Pilates exercise um, against conventional exercises on core muscle strength in postnatal women. So there were 50 women um, randomised to receive either Pilates training or um, conventional exercises and the women in these groups completed um, 30 minutes of exercise six times a week for three weeks and what the study showed was that there was a statistical significant difference in both groups of women so both groups of women benefited however the Pilates group showed a st statistically significant greater core strength as compared to the control group, so those doing conventional exercises. When we move on to the pelvic floor muscle um, randomised control trials, there's two of those. And I think that probably makes a lot of sense considering the area um, of the body that um, Pilates is um, focusing on. So there's a couple of studies there. One where they took 62 women, um, again, randomly allocated them to receive either traditional physio -led therapy or Pilates therapy. And both groups showed improvement in pelvic floor muscle strength. So there was no difference really between those groups, nothing statistically significant. Another study was looking at Pilates exercises, again on pelvic floor muscles um, following childbirth, and there were a hundred Twenty women, so nearly twice as many women involved in this study. Half again were allocated to receive Pilates, and half were in the control. So they took measures of um, vaginal resting pressure, systolic pressure, um, and duration of traction. And um, in the Pilates group, those pressures were greater. Not statistically significant but still there was some difference there. So again, it shows 
Pilates when used can make a difference. Another one looked not only at the pelvic floor tone, but also postnatal depression, which I found was really interesting. Very, very small though. There were only 17 participants in this study. And the participants exercised three times a week, between 40 and 60 minutes, for seven weeks. And what they found was that vaginal contraction improved in the exercise group versus the control group. And also, the postnatal depression symptoms improved in the exercise group. Obviously, only a small number of people were involved, so difficult to generalise those findings, but I think really interesting findings nevertheless. And finally, one more study that I found was um, looking at sleep quality um, and the effect of Pilates exercise on sleep quality in postpartum women. And we know that women postnatally, um, if they can improve their sweet sleep quality, I'm sure they would set up a hand off if you had something for them. So this study, another randomised control trial. 80 postnatal women allocated to either a home-based Pilates program or control, which was not to do nothing other than their usual activity. In the exercise group, they started to exercise from 72 hours postnatal, so quite quickly afterwards. And they were exercise, exercising five times a week for eight weeks. They measured sweet sleep quality at week four and week eight, in the intervention group, the Pilates-based group showed a significant improvement in their subjective sleep quality and their sleep latency, but there was no difference in sleep duration or their um, sleep efficiency or their sleep disturbance, which I don't think is very surprising there. So that's a quick <coughs> run through of some of the literature that's out there and if any of you have got any comments to make on that you know please keep them to the end and we can discuss them it'd be great to hear your thoughts on some of that so what I want to do now <clears throat> is move on to the actual program that we were running the program was delivered as part of an EC funded program so we received um, money along with five other five other cities around Europe and each city did something a little bit different. We, um, first of all, we consulted with women, so we consulted with pregnant and postnatal women about the types of activities they thought would be beneficial to them in their different periods and from there, as I say, we developed a programme of postnatal Pilates. So the sessions were physiotherapist led. So we found a physiotherapist who wasn't working in maternity at the time, um, but she was a Pilates instructor and she had undertaken additional um, training in working with pregnant and postnatal women. And we found her by doing um, a Google search of um, Pilates instructors in the local area and looking for reviews on something called Mumsnet. So that's a discussion board where new mums, expected mums can come together to discuss pretty much anything. And I thought that would be a good place to kind of get the low down on good therapists and instructors. And that's what we did. So I contacted several therapists um, instructors um, and Nikki who we got was by far best. Um, <clears throat> we devised four week courses. Um, these were an hour long and we were advised to deliver four weeks because women would begin to feel the results of their work after four weeks. And what it also enabled us to do was to run more courses than if we'd only run six-week courses. So the sessions were an hour long. 
they were split between um, a practical element, which it was predominantly, and an educational element. So we would spend the first five to ten minutes of the class um, um, looking at the muscles that we'd be working in that class and also ironing out any problems that maybe women had experienced in the previous week. So they were really informative. Would be um, an opportunity to to learn and practice different exercises for the next sort of four minutes. Um, and during the sessions, um, there'd be different levels. So women who were familiar with it would be able to do a slightly more advanced um, exercise, and uh, they would all receive one-to-one -one attention. Now, what was great about these sessions were mums were able to bring their babies with them. So the mums were already members of gyms or had already done exercise programs before. So they were familiar with exercise. As they'd now become a mum, it was difficult to fit it in because they weren't able to take their baby with them. So we knew that that would be a barrier accessing the program and so from the outset it made sense that mums could bring their babies so if the baby was sleeping when they arrived they would pretty much stay in their pram or their push chair while mum got on and did the class if baby was awake though we would have, have um, some mats laid down in the center of the room so mum could still see their baby and while the instructor was running through the class I would be available to go comfort the baby if it needed it, do the odd nappy change, anything that allowed mum to carry on. And if baby needed feeding, mum would just take a break and feed baby. So they were really good sessions from that point of view. The classes were community based. So we held them in what we call children's centres. So a bit like um, a community centre. We did that because we knew that the centres were accessible. The centre was where we had um, consulted with women in the first place about the types of activities that they wanted. We were familiar because often women had received their midwifery care in these centres. They were easily accessible, so they were on bus route. And also there was car parking facilities for those travelling by car. But um, they should have been walking really from most women's homes. Now as I say we offered five courses in total and the first two courses we were able to offer a creche facility. Because the children's centres had um, nurseries attached to them uh, we were able to access play workers. So again to remove another barrier for those mums who had older children they were able to bring those along and we had play workers who could work with those children while mum had now with themselves. Now we only ran that for the first two courses and that's because after that we were mainly seeing um, first time mums so we, we didn't have that concern. But the course just happened to fall when their old children were already in a nursery setting and so mum was available. So the creche facility really wasn't needed after those first two session uh, courses that we ran but what I'm saying is we know that that is often a barrier for women and so we did attempt to overcome that barrier so moving on to feedback that we received so we weren't we weren't attempting a randomized control trial as I talked about at the start we wanted to just evaluate the value of these courses to women. So um, I'll just run through now some of that feedback that we received. So we had 40 women in total attending the various courses that we offered and 11 women provided feedback. I think that's often because we asked them to complete the forms at the end of the final session and those mums who had other children to collect had to 
go ahead and do that. So they rushed out to the room. They might have had to feed the baby at the end of the session. So quite a low response rate considering how many women were involved. Um, and the response rate you can see there, 27.5% response rate. So if we look at the graph on the other side, we were asking about the practicalities of the course. So was the venue suitable? And all women responded yes. It was a suitable day for them. So we know that women want accessible um, community-based exercises. We asked there, was there anything about the venue that they would change? And nine out of the 11 women said no. So the venue was really suitable. Somebody else asked for a larger car park. They found that the car park was too small. Yeah, it was a little bit small. So you have to be there early to get a good parking space. And somebody else would have preferred a soft play area. Maybe. You can see on the right hand side of the slide now, um, was the e class at a convenient time for them? And the class that we ran was on a Friday afternoon between 1.30 and 2.30 in the afternoon. 10 out of the 11 women agreed that that was a good time. Um, and one person thought that it was a little bit late to pick up their older child from school. I think really important feedback that that was a good time. I deliberately try, and try to avoid anything in the morning when you're working with postnatal women because having been there myself morning kind of doesn't exist um, for most new mums. The mums involved in these classes were typically um, mums around six weeks postnatal and some very newborn babies. So a little bit more feedback from the sessions. Um, we asked did you find Find the educational part of the course useful, and 100% found it useful or very useful. So that's really warming. Um, and we also asked, was the practical Pilates easy to follow? And again, all of the women, all 11 women, said yes, they did find Pilates, the practical side of the class, easy to follow. We limited the class size to eight women. And that was so that um, the instructor had enough time and enough capacity to focus on the women, uh, to correct any postures, or to talk through any more advanced exercises that the women may be able to do. And speaking of which, we asked, do you think you received enough feedback and one-to-one -one attention? And again, all 11 women women who completed the feedback felt that they had received enough feedback and attention. So again, that's really positive. So we asked women for their comments about how they did they feel any difference in their body during in the last four weeks. And you can see there a range of comments. So women reported feeling more strength in their abdomen becoming um, more aware of their muscles and their pelvic floor tone, that they're aware of muscles switching on, and that they've regained some flexibility. And I like the comment there that the woman felt much more relaxed as well as flexible, and somebody else reporting that they felt more toned. A few more comments. <clears throat> women that they felt that their back was stronger. Again, more tone in their abdominals. Women feeling better posture, they're more aware of how they're standing and how they're getting up. More awareness of some of their deep muscles and less backache. And it also made them realise that they needed to do exercises more regularly. So again, really positive stuff which aligns with some of the literature that we heard about right at the start of the presentation. We asked whether there was anything that the women who 
partaken could suggest for future courses. And um, apart from the location being in north of the city or a longer course, women generally thought that um, there were no changes needed. Now, somebody did ask for some notes to take away so that they could continue the exercise at home. And we did, in fact, provide um, a booklet for women with exercises. It's a booklet that is um, produced by physio group um, who work specifically in obstetrics and gynaecology with very detailed diagrams and explanations of various exercises. And they were the same exercises that we did in the class. So they did, in fact, have something to take away and refer back to when they were at home. So that was the feedback, all generally positive, similar findings to the studies that I described at the beginning of the presentation. So now what I want to do is just talk more generally about the considerations that you would have to bear in mind when you're delivering any type of um, class or activity um, for this group of women. So I've already talked quite a bit about the venue. So what we found worked for us was a community-based uh, venue, something that was familiar. At our venue, there were already things going on. On. So there was already breastfeeding groups there for the postnatal women, and women had had antenatal care in these centres, so it was very familiar. Not intimidating like a gym for those women who are perhaps not familiar with exercising or haven't done any for a while. A nice relaxed venue where we did have access to other professions should we need them. So for example, uh, play workers if you were able to offer that type of creche facility for women with older children. So venue, really important. It was central to community, so really accessible. The time. We offered hours, our activity in the afternoon. And as I said, I think it's really difficult to leave the house before lunchtime. And so afternoon, I think, is really valuable time to offer something like this. Now cost is down there, it's a consideration. I don't know what it's like in other places, um, but by the time women would come into our exercise classes, most of them would have been on what we call statutory maternity pay. So it's a huge cut in salary for those women. So that's something that you have to bear in mind. Now we we were fortunate that we were able to offer courses free of charge because it was part of a larger programme. But what we wouldn't have wanted to have done anyway is to um, make cost a barrier. Um, I know that um, this is a consideration for our Pilates instructor who has continued offering the classes. And I think I'm right in saying that uh, her post classes are slightly cheaper than her main stream classes because she's aware that this may be a barrier to some women. It needs to be baby friendly. <clears throat> so as I said, we um, I was on hand if you like to make sure that babies were taken care of so mum could focus on the exercises um, that mum was happy to bring her baby along and again we removed that barrier of them having to find care for their newborn while they went and did something for themselves. Um, I know that the instructor has continued the classes, has got lots of things um, to keep baby entertained for those same reasons. Take away information. So what we know is that four weeks is enough time to start making a difference when women reported that they felt more toned, more awareness of their muscles and their posture. Um, and, but we also wanted to offer them something that they could take away and continue 
continue practicing and keep making um, improvements to their posture and their tone. So that's really important so that they're able to take some information away from them to continue building on what um, they've learned in the course. And another consideration is the format of the course. And so, as we saw from the feedback, women really valued um, the emphasis on um, the educational side of the um, course, as well as the practical side. And in keeping the numbers small, you could see as well that women really valued the one-to-one -one attention that the instructor was able to give them. I don't think the instructor would have been able to do that had she had a much larger course than what we had. So really important. And again, if you've got any comments on, on that, it would be really helpful and useful to see those when we come to the end of the session. just want to comment briefly, because I know I've been talking for a little while now, about current UK guidelines. So it would be really great to see an international perspective on this. And the only guidelines I could really find were those aimed at pregnant women, very little postnatal wise. So the illustration that we have there comes from the Chief Medical Officer um, for the UK on physical exercise, physical activity for pregnant women. So at the top it starts with some benefits of physical activity and then in the centre um, ideas for what you might, might consider and I think the top right person on a mat is somebody doing something like a Pilates pose, maybe a yoga pose and telling you to aim for about 150 minutes of um, activity per week. It recommends muscle strengthening activities twice a week, which is perfect um, for Pilates because that is essentially what Pilates is. Um, but unfortunately, no advice on what postnatal women should do. Um, I think it's the RCOG recommend exercising for six weeks postnatal if you've had a cesarean section um, but nothing otherwise so that pretty much brings me to the end of what I wanted to talk about um, it would be really good if we could open up a discussion now to see what other people are doing any comments on the course that we offered any questions about the course that we offered would be fantastic but really I think it would be great if we could hand it over now and see um, what your experiences are any comments as I say about what you were doing if you would like to make a comment either the text box or through your microphone that would be fantastic so over to you we do have a first question Claire oh great in terms of this program, what is your explanation of the link mechanism to reduced postnatal depression? Um, so that was somebody else's study. And um, what I think helped our women, our women reported feeling better. They were coming into um, a social setting. Um, it was an activity what was a purely about their baby. So it wasn't like a breastfeeding group where all the focus tends to be on the baby and the baby's nutrition. It was something that the women were able to do themselves without any guilt because they could take their babies with them. So they were coming each week. It was almost in their diary. I'm taking this hour out for myself on Friday afternoon. Um, and that was planned in. They knew they were doing it for the next four weeks. They knew they would be meeting the same group of women that they'd met in the previous week and what they would see the following week. And I think making time for themselves in a social setting was really beneficial to these women. Um, there was no guilt attached because their baby was with them, but they were able to 
pay themselves a little bit of attention. So I think that could be the mechanism for reducing postnatal depression, maybe. I know certainly the women got a lot out of the class for those reasons. Certainly, there's the social aspect of support and feeling better um, to help prevent postpartum depression. But we know from other exercise that when there's large muscle movement, women are producing their own endorphins that are helping them feel better. Um, Claire, you know the literature on Pilates. There's probably a study that looks directly at endorphins or a reduction in cytokines. But I think, I, I would do this with hesitation, um, but we can extrapolate from looking at other sorts of physical activity, preventing or ameliorating postpartum depression, that that's also a mechanism. Absolutely. I think what you said was spot on. Um, there's lots of, or there's more um, evidence around other issues in uh, women's health. So women recovering from things like breast cancer, where Pilates has been used as a mechanism for, for um, enhancing women's outlook on life, if you like. And I think, yeah, the same mechanisms would be in play um, across the two uh, groups of women. It's so absolutely what you say uh, about exercise promoting endorphins and all those good hormones um, having some part to play in it. Um, yeah. Thanks, Claire. Uh, you talked a little bit about cost to the women. Mm -hmm. And um, I was a little curious about clothing for Pilates. This is going to show my um, kind of ignorance about Pilates. I have this general mental image. But are women able to wear some of their very casual um, pregnancy clothing to do the Pilates exercises? Yes, they can. Yeah. So does it really need to be any cost outlay for these women? Um, they can wear pretty much anything that we've got in the wardrobe. So there was obviously women there who perhaps before pregnancy had enjoyed going to the gym and liked their gym wear and came out, um, you know, very well dressed in specific clothing. And on the other hand, there were women who pulled on their jogging bottoms and away they went. So there's no need for any extensive outlay on clothing um, and in fact I know one of the sessions one of our mums who were signed up didn't actually attend the class but there was another woman who'd come into the centre for another reason um, another class which had been cancelled and she'd not been told off so she was just in her everyday clothes and we said come in we've got space come and join us don't let your journey having been wasted get in here, come and enjoy, enjoy our group, and she did. So it just shows you can come in in the clothes that you would be wearing ordinarily and join in. So absolutely no barrier there to joining in. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Claire, you also talked about being there as part of the research study. Mm -hmm. And my guess is, Pilates is available in most large urban areas, at least across English-speaking countries that I've traveled in. If a midwife were in a smaller area where Pilates wasn't available, or maybe there wasn't um, somebody available to do the Pilates classes, how reasonable is it for a midwife to learn Pilates and then lead that group herself instead of the physiotherapist? Entirely plausible. I have no experience of undertaking any training in Pilates myself, which 
which is why for an independent instructor, if you like, um, who just happened to be a physiotherapist with an interest in this area. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there must be courses available. And I'm sure also there is no end of YouTube videos that women get at home for themselves. Um, but then that would remove that social aspect we've talked about, which I think is really important for postnatal women. The area that we were working in, um, it was an area. It was, um, we were in Manchester at this time, and it was an inner city area uh, with quite high levels of economic and social deprivation. Um, quite a lot of non-English speaking women in the area. So when we did the consultation and um, we offered um, lots of different activities and we were asking women to tell us which activities they would prefer to see, actually Pilates wasn't the most um, popular choice. So, so after we'd offered the most op um, popular choices to women, which were the swimming and the buggy groups, and the walking groups. Um, we thought, what else can we do? Um, and we looked at Pilates, um, and I knew a little bit about it, having done um, some courses myself, but never trained in it. And we thought, come on, we'll, we'll give this a go. Is it a case of women aren't selecting it because they're unfamiliar with it? Is it because they don't know what's involved? And so on. Um, and I suspect that that was the case because the interest in it and the feedback that we got, you know, has been has been fantastic. So, yeah, there will be areas where it may not not be an automatic fit with the population there, because that's what we found through the consultation. But I think once women, um, you know, get involved. Um, they can really see the benefits, and that, that's certainly true of our experience anyway. Um, so it started off, we were going to do a taste or a couple of courses, take it from there, and then we went on to run five courses. And as I've said before, the instructor has now gone on to offer courses in the community anyway. So, um, yeah, it's quite interesting how we got to where we got to. All right. Thank you so much, Claire.